Good morning. How many people here have heard that bees are dying at an alarming rate? Yeah. All right. Excellent. So my name's Haley, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Complex. So we care a lot about honeybees because they really contribute a lot to our ability to eat a diverse diet. Here you can see a supermarket with and without bees. It's a pretty big difference. We also care about honeybees because they contribute a lot to U.S. agriculture. $16 billion of added value every year. These industries have a potential to be directly impacted by declining populations of honeybees. There's a lot of problems that honeybees face today. As a honeybee scientist, I always tell people that it's a great time to be in honeybee research. It's not a great time to be a honeybee, but it's even harder to be a beekeeper. That's because there are pathogens, pesticides, new parasites, and poor nutrition issues that bees face. And how can beekeepers keep track of how healthy their colonies are doing and prevent losses? Right now, the only way that beekeepers can know what's going on inside that box of bees is to actually open it and visually inspect the frame to figure out what's happening. This is especially difficult for the big beekeepers that really contribute to those fruits and vegetables we like to eat. Those are not your neighbor's backyard bees. These are one and a half million colonies of honeybees that are trucked across the country on the back of flatbed trailers going farm to farm pollinating almonds, avocados, blueberries, melon, everything. From Maine to Florida, Washington to Mexico, bees are traveling around with their beekeepers across the country every year. A lot of beekeepers that participate in this migratory pollination, as we call it, often have several thousand colonies at a minimum that they're trying to keep track of. When their colonies are spread across county or even state lines, there's no way for them to know if one colony in one farm is in need of help because it's in trouble. Fortunately, Complex solves this problem. We have a frame embedded sensor system that picks up specific types of data from the colony that then we can transmit through our area network and through cellular to the beekeeper with our analysis that tells them what is happening to the colony. Beekeepers are really great at keeping colonies alive. The problem they have right now is not keeping colonies alive. It's knowing which colonies to focus on so that they can help them be healthier. We have two main market segments that we're interested in. Commercial beekeepers, of course. We plan on targeting big beekeepers people with more than 3,000 colonies first. And I want to be clear, these numbers are market size, not potential revenue. Almond crop insurers are also a big target for us because one primary requirement for almond growers having uh, insurance that they can file through is actually having bees in the yard during pollination time. So by this is you know a very unpredictable market, agriculture in general, and by having more numbers about how well pollination is going, they can have a better understanding of the yields that that farmer can expect. We have three sources of revenue, but we're primarily focusing on the data analysis. That's because there's a never-ending list of groups that are interested in fine-scale information about industrial agricultural landscapes. We're also interested in market facilitation because the beekeeping industry, we've learned through our interviews, is a pretty uh, complex ecosystem with not a lot of transparency. And we want beekeepers with healthy bees and farms with pollinator-friendly ecosystems to be able to price their services more appropriately in the agricultural market. We also are here because we want to make the pollinators in general have an easier time in our agricultural systems. By monetizing ecological services and making sure that pollination, pollination prices actually match the ecological value of the landscape, we can support the pollinators as a whole, not just migratory honeybees. So Nathan, my co-founder and I, are both current PhD students at Cornell. Nathan's background is in electrical engineering and studies complex system and data analysis. And I'm the bee scientist. 
We're currently looking on expanding our team. And with that, I'll take questions. So thank you for that. Um, you very clearly outlined a market problem, but I don't know if anybody in the room was familiar with. So that was very helpful. Um, can you explain a little bit on um, seasonality and how the seasonality of, of the market issue itself could affect yeah. your revenue flow? Absolutely. So, of course, bee season is really during the summer. But one problem we have is that it really starts in February. That's when bees first get on the truck. They're leaving from the southeast and going to California during the summer. And that summer period is actually when we see the largest number of preventable losses in honeybees. Uh, commercial beekeepers end up losing 30 to 40 percent of their bees every year, and 20 percent of those losses actually occur during the summer. So as researchers, we see those numbers as highly preventable because backyard beekeepers that have a chance to have a better uh, finger on what their bees are doing day to day don't experience those same levels of losses. So of course summer is really important, but then also the information that we can get from a colony over the winter is a great predictor for which colonies might be strong enough to be up for that cross-country journey. Some colonies might better just have a staycation at home. Uh, with an understanding that you are the bee scientist um, mm -hmm. and that your partner is on the technology side, can you tell me a little bit about the technology that is being used here? Um, is it uh, proprietary to the company so such that we could build a competitive advantage about stopping other people to build these magic boxes for the bees? Yeah, so actually, oh, my slides are gone. Oh, okay. Um, I have a great competitor slide. But anyway, oh, there we go. Yay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So... Our devices have an internal self-contained energy harvesting device, and that is proprietary. We're in the process of having provisional patents filed, but there's also um, a lot of difficulty in getting electronics in a beehive. Honey is conductive. Bees don't like foreign objects in their colony, and they'll actively pull apart our wires and eat into our soldered lines. <laughs> Microcontrollers and colonies don't do well. And this project actually came out of a collaboration from our dissertation research, where we just wanted the data set of what goes on inside a colony at all times, and realized that no one else has access to what happens to these bees as they're traveling. There's a number of other groups that do sell sensors that go in colonies, but they're either really large and not really agile and suited for that migratory management, or they're reliant on a home Wi-Fi system. And that's not going to work in rural Wyoming where bees camp out in June. OK, thank you. Can you give us a little bit better understanding of your potential revenue model and the, and the size of the potential market? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll take the cost of a colony as being about $600. And if a beekeeper has 3,000 colonies and they experience 20% of losses, if we can cut those losses by one half to give them 10% losses and we charge them $10 a year for our device plus a subscription service for the analysis, that's $30,000 a year from a beekeeper with 3,000 colonies, which is about average. And there's one and a half million colonies that go through this process every year. So that's saving a beekeeper from their 20% losses. That's about $300,000 of losses every year. It's about the cost of a decent house in upstate New York. And we can save them $180,000 a year. Thank you.